really like to compliment you guys over there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mushab. So, uh, first of all, uh, uh, I would like to just quickly introduce uh, about company, and then we can just quickly dive into uh, the, uh, the discussion here, and then we can uh, uh, go through the flow of Q and A coming in. And uh, so, uh, uh, thank you again, and uh, uh, be part of the session. So, we are uh, just to give a basic. Uh, understanding. So we basically focus on, as I think Prashant has already mentioned, a uh, focus on commercial industrial uh, projects, rooftop projects, and uh, uh, based out of uh, NCR region. But uh, we have a presence across uh, Southeast Asia and part of Middle East, and we're looking at few projects in Middle East. And basically, we do a lot of design engineering work for the US-based clients as well. But our basic focus remains on India. Main core focus remains on India, where. Uh, we have now implemented close to 350 uh, plus uh, sites, 150 plus clients, and uh, across almost 24 states uh, in the country. And uh, we work from right from the uh, initial asset management to all the way uh, to uh, so initial project development and all the way to the asset management of the project. And we'll go into more details uh, later on in, in the uh, slides. And uh, we are also an investing company of a fund called New Fund. Uh, which is a joint fund of uh, State Bank of India Group and the UK government through UK DFID. So, uh, so Adarsh Das uh, and I founded the company uh, in year 2010, so almost now, almost 10 years ago. And before that, both of us worked uh, for about 10 years in the US market, uh, developing mostly solar assets, and uh, then decided to move back to Bolivia and then focus on. Uh, projects uh, here, uh, uh, especially in the commercial industry segment, because uh, if we realize that CNI is a segment where uh, majority of uh, the uh, uh, power is going or is being consumed, and secondly, that's where uh, the pain is for the industry. And if you look at uh, uh, the tariffs for the high, uh, is are the highest for CNI sector. So we realized that uh, that's the sector we want to focus. And we eventually. The sector is starting to open up for financing need and EPA and now starting to, we are seeing the leases are also starting to open up. So, uh, what do we do? Uh, so, we basically work across multiple, uh, 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 across multiple basically business models. We definitely do uh, CNI, PPAs or built to operate in transfer basis right from uh, 15 to 25 years. It's only basic terms. Although we have done a 10 year term as well. But that's uh, uh, basically a, for, a, for a very specific reason. Uh, so as Mr. Shah has also pointed out, we basically focus on creditworthy clients and ensure their bankability is there so we can help uh, get the uh, project financed. And then secondly, we are also now starting to see uh, leasing as well. Although uh, leasing is, uh, we are doing it uh, out of India, uh, for projects out of India. Uh, but in India also, we are starting to see that leasing is starting to happen, uh, mostly but for creditworthy clients. But uh, we are seeing that uh, some NBFCs have started to open up or is still evaluating for SMEs, especially for 250 kilowatt or below. But it's in uh, very early stages, but we see that leasing is a good segment which is going to open up in next few years. And this may actually be a very prominent sector going forward. Uh, but with the combination of PP and leasing, we see uh, solar deployment will uh, be even much more uh, uh, aggressive in uh, the CNS sector. Although there will be a blip because of COVID for next few months, but then eventually the recovery will take place and we see uh, the spike will come in. Uh, then the third uh, different model which we also operate is EPC, uh, uh, where we basically do typical engineering procurement supply, construction implementation, testing, ONM. For a longer duration of the period as well, and uh, so basically EPC with asset management or EPC uh, without asset management as well. But since we have worked across almost 24, 25 states in the country, right from uh, north to south to east to west, we have a good understanding of uh, how to deliver the projects. What are the other regulatory issues in certain states? So we can talk about that as well. Uh, our asset management, so we have a full in-house asset management uh, team uh, where we have our in-house uh, remote monitoring uh, set up and uh, uh, we provide uh, on-site uh, ONM 
aspect of it and then part of that whole uh, core service offerings becomes right uh, deploying the people at site doing the joint meter read, uh, readings at uh, every month end the regular preventive maintenance predictive maintenance their parts inventory management uh, and uh, timely replacements if any issues happens on the uh, components including inverters and then uh, sometimes plant security is also required from our end and other warranty claims and all that uh, so this actually becomes a network operating center which is housed at our headquarters becomes a very critical uh, centerpiece for our offering because not only we uh, the assets which we are, we are which we are implementing we have to ensure we are uh, generating what we have uh, more or at least minimum at what we have predicted and we have to ensure that uh, our asset management teams are also working properly so uh, that uh, having a remote uh, network operating center actually helps us uh, uh, doing those deliverables uh, in the real, in the real time so in fact we are also monitoring projects which are outside of india as well uh, through our uh, headquarters here in india and uh, managing more than 100 plus sites and uh, we do a lot of uh, ai based uh, monitoring and maintenance part of it as well so uh, so we basically uh, uh, if you look at uh, what we have done over the last few years so definitely we have been able to stick around in the market which uh, in the solar itself is a bigger challenge because if you look at so many people have come and gone and uh, uh, this sector is now opening up so uh, what our clients value is uh, we definitely provide an end-to-end -end solution and we can basically help understand the project structure and deploy capital accordingly design build and develop the project maintain it for longer term and uh, and we are very flexible in offering we can basically structure project accordingly and uh, and this is actually important point and i think i would like to compliment the dani team here as well how they have been able to scale up the manufacturing here in india using high quality components uh, within the solar modules right so not only we basically partner with uh, the tier one manufacturers on the solar modules uh, like adani but others also uh, including inverters other co other uh, components as well so that has been because we own our own assets so we are, and plus we do ppc for others also so uh, even if uh, you look at our projects which have been deployed for almost now eight nine years uh, the generation has been uh, at market so uh, therefore a reliable partner becomes very very important across the value chain so in our end clients they, they see that value coming in from us and uh, uh, we have been actually in parent because since we're working at other uh, countries as well so we've been in parent now by exim bank uh, uh, since uh, and have a strong very strong leadership uh, team across uh, multiple disciplines and uh, provide uh, in fact one of the key providers of hybrid solar plus storage solutions we recently one interesting project in lakshadweep across four islands where we are uh, that uh, those islands are powered by diesel so we, now we are integrating solar and storage along with diesel over there so that will bring down uh, the diesel consumption cost in those islands and we have been operating few solar plus storage for last now 6 uh, plus years so we have very very good understanding on the data and we have understood how the different batteries work uh, what technology to partner with and all and others so we are now closing a few uh, solar plus storage hybrid uh, pps as well i think uh, one of the uh, key projects so we have implemented difficult projects floating projects ground mount in fact the first project uh, photo which we have shown uh, in the markets in the first slide uh, that actually was a project which we have implemented in uh, philippines uh, this particular one which is a uh, very difficult terrain so uh, our i would say uh, uh, essence is uh, taking on difficult challenging projects and solving uh, those and providing the right uh, capital solution around it so uh, we basically uh, work from entire project development to asset management cycle and get early involved uh, in the uh, early stages and deliver uh, through the life cycle of the project and if required we basically get in uh, the middle of the cycle as well whenever wherever we can add value ideas to add value to some of our marquee clients uh, which we have worked over time uh, over the years and uh, have been uh, uh, a great relationship and we have developed multiple projects uh, with a lot of these clients so coming to the uh, 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 this webinars what is efficient financing for uh, epc and developers right so uh, if we look at from a commercial industrial rooftop uh, provider perspective I would urge everyone to really look at uh, SBI World Bank line. Although similar lines have been now provided by PNB and ADB and REC and KFW, 
but uh, SBI is a little bit more ahead than PNB and REC with their respective lines. And what are these lines? These are basically multilaterals, including World Bank, ADB, or KFW. They have provided a certain line. For example, World Bank has provided a billion dollar line to SBI. And these comes at a very attractive rate of almost 8.5% and go up to 15 years, right? So, uh, and so what you can do is you can uh, look at your project, uh, take your project uh, to the SBI, uh, uh, your respective branch. Sometimes the respective branches may not have a sufficient or resources uh, which understand solar projects. So you need to basically find in your region what are those, uh, which are those uh, respective branches. Maybe you want to go to an SME branch or a mid-corporate branch to understand. Probably try to get to SME branch. Uh, and generally they have the more optimal uh, resources. So, uh, and they will appraise your project. What we have found is uh, uh, the SBI or any particular lender, they look, and I, I think they will slide, I have a slide uh, later on, what they look for, right? So you have to ensure your information is credible. Your components are right, right? For example, if you have a DFL panel or any other, other components are there, you have a basically strong information package. And, uh, but we have seen once you have the right information package, uh, then uh, the process actually takes, uh, uh, process ha actually happens very fast, uh, as long as the information is there. So, uh, but uh, other lines are starting to now work on, and similarly we have seen a couple of other, uh, and VFCs are now starting to uh, do a similar type of structuring as well, including Tata Capital. Uh, what will help actually to, in uh, so that is something uh, interestingly for P, divided into two basic points for PPA type, IPPs or uh, CAPEX projects. So what would help is if we can get a working capital line of corporate financing to support IPPs, short term financing needs and reducing time to execute projects. So what that means is if you have a, a line uh, structured for these corporate PPAs, kind of a box, right? And as long as your projects checks those boxes, then automatic approval is there so that you can ex implement your projects on time. And, uh, and, then, uh, and then later on, long-term financing can come, come in. And for a CapEx-based project, uh, if you look at what generally is required is a, is a working capital, right? So you can look at a, uh, so some structuring can happen from institutions like Irita, where uh, once they check your cred uh, credibility, and now I think uh, apart from collateral, GST is giving a good database. So once they figure out, okay, this company can have a, this sort of a line, and that structuring can happen for three to five years, right? And payment uh, uh, rep and with a repayment for the off takers. So uh, those structuring, if they can happen, and I think Irida can, as is, is Mr. Shah is saying, we can approach them. So uh, again, structure for both uh, capex type projects and for PPA-based uh, companies. And uh, so that way, the deployment can actually be very faster. And then the long-term financing can come, come in at a later date. So if you look at challenges faced by EPC and developers in financing or refinancing, right? So it, it is multifold. Definitely, uh, it takes a longer time, uh, sanction leading to delay in project execution. And if you talk about why, because you're not able to find the right resources within the banking system. So the idea is to basically find the right resources within the banking system and basically put together the right credible information package for them. So if, as long as we can make their job easy, right? So they will be basically able to fast track our application. Uh, because of COVID, there is a liquidity issue across the industry along, including NBFCs. But NBFCs will open up and they were actually, uh, uh, have been financing a few uh, uh, rooftop projects. So but that sector we see will take a backseat for, for at least uh, nine months to a, uh, to a year if not more, but certain NBFCs are still active in the market, partner with them, but they are also becoming very, very selective who to work with and who not to work with. So uh, the idea is again is to, uh, is to basically put together the right information package and be very, uh, in terms of approach, be very credible in, in that as well. Regulatory challenges are definitely there. And, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, if you're working on a newer technology, either floating solar or storage system or open access projects, so that uh, so that basically puts in more responsibility on, a on our shoulders as a developer to put together more informatory package uh, for the lenders because the more information we provide and more educative, uh, we, uh, we provide more education to them. They will become more acceptable uh, in understanding our project and uh, hopefully then able to uh, finance it. Uh, the challenges basically becomes ad hoc policy changes are there, lack of working capital is there. Uh, 
uh, and then uh, uh, and the innovative product financing, like financing or lease financing, right? So lease financing is still not very prominent in India. So as as uh, as that will start opening up and new products will start coming in, we'll see a more uh, deployment will start coming in. But uh, with institutions like Irida or REC or PFC, uh, uh, they are starting to open up and understanding uh, those pro those, those uh, products. Uh, if we can unlock those products, the uh, potential becomes even more tremendous. So, if you look at challenges faced by lenders in financing and refinancing, right? Uh, number one is very important that uh, from their perspective also, because if you look a loan officer, right, he's also putting a lot in financing a project because his entire, uh, uh, should say, professional uh, uh, tenor is online, right? If the loan goes back, then uh, it, it's a big dent on his uh, image as well. So what we need, uh, so he's also looking for good experience DPC or developers. So, uh, and market is actually lacking them. So in India, if we can develop an ecosystem, right, of good DPC, a lot of, lot of knowledge sharing amongst each other, because uh, we truly speak, uh, under, uh, think that if we can uh, have an ecosystem of stronger DPC players, stronger developers, and have a and have a some lot of an education system sh sharing in place, so that will actually help the ecosystem, and uh, that in turn will basically have more and more lending in place. Lack of policy policy support is all is always there. Uh, I would say the over last few years, uh, it has become much more clearer than it used to be, and what we are seeing is government is also becoming more supportive, and wherever there are, are challenges, they are at least open to hear those. So in certain states, uh, uh, they have seen a lot of challenges, but they're still open to... Uh, but uh, I think we also have to understand we're going up against these comms, right? And we are starting to uh, eat up the share. So they will also have to start thinking about changing their own business models. And that is happening not just in India, but across the world. If you look at uh, US or Europe or Japan or wherever, the discoms are also starting to change their how they operate. So, uh, so a lot of education, I think, from both ways will have to come uh, because we all have to basically be operating together. Then uh, sometimes off-takers are falling below investment rate, and I think this COVID is going to be a big challenge because we'll also all have to look, keep on looking our own uh, uh, clients that uh, if any clients are falling below the investment rate, then what do we need to do and how do we need to bring it uh, up to, uh, up to that level and uh, how do we implement the projects accordingly. And uh, quality compromise by developers because sometimes the projects and then challenges becomes on how do we uh, uh, implement those projects from a qualitative perspective. EHS is another bigger challenge uh, because as, as a company, as also as we are part of a, uh, SBI and uh, DFID, uh, so our EHS norms are very, uh, very stringent and then uh, but see, there is a big gap in the market. Uh, understanding the cost of VHS is one thing, but uh, upfront cost. But once you get used to providing the right environmental health and safety standards, uh, then you will see the uh, savings uh, becomes enormous in terms of you have a better ecosystem within uh, your own uh, employees. Right, uh, you're providing the safe workplace. You're having uh, upgraded subcontractors. Uh, then. Your uh, safe manpower which you're working on site also goes up. So those are the also key things which now lenders are looking more and more. So EHS is something uh, we, we should, as a community, should focus more and more. And then definitely the uh, biggest part is the key equipment selection. So uh, I think everyone knows panel space plays one key aspect to it. But the other part of it is how you're designing your mounting structures, for example. That's another bigger challenge, right? We pick up a project and then we design 20 tons of mega, megawatt or 30, whatever, right? And then the panels blow away. So those are key aspects. What are the design standards, cables, what we are looking at, and other smaller components, nuts, bolts, and all that. So uh, it has to be looked in uh, from a uh, from a uh, from a whole value uh, system. So lenders are now have become very very smart. For example, uh, we have been part of multiple of those discussions. So, because so much uh, gigawatts and gigawatts of financing has have happened within the country, so uh, we realize that the lenders have become very smart. They have taken a lot of these courses. Banks are organizing their own internal courses. So, we have to put together a very informative package if we really want to get a project financed. Because at the end of the day, they have multiple choices who they want to finance, right? So, we, as long as we can think from their perspective, we, 
we will be able to get a financing in place. So efficient financing, right? To do's. So a lot of the things which we have covered already. Uh, but if you look at, let's define what is efficient. Right? The efficient is basically time efficient and scale efficient. As long as it can be, and then it has to be flexible, right? So if we can put together the right information package, find the right guy, then it becomes time efficient. Scale is if we can get a line a structure in place, uh, let's say a credit line in place, and then we can keep on revolving it, then it becomes scale efficient, so flexible. Right? If we have a 10 year PP, a 15 year PP, or ask you know, 25 people or, or this size change, so that becomes a, 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 a flexibility in place. Uh, what are the common bottlenecks for lenders and developers, right? Regulatory is the number one part of it, right? Change in rule, policies, net metering, cost metering, right? All of a sudden, overnight, right? That That is a major headache for everyone. Less defined technical standards, right? in, especially in solar. Uh, so that's another bigger part of it. Right? Lack of commonly accepted accepted benchmarks and information on technology. I think that is one bigger part of it. So as a community, we have to put out a lot of information and uh, educate the peers because this industry is, devo is developing, right? Uh, so we have to put out more information, keep on educating each other uh, so that we put together a right ecosystem of companies and uh, professionals uh, who can uh, up, up, up the, uh, uh, the benchmark on the technology front. Uh, what about the possible dissolutions if we look about, right? Great lines of working capital for qualified companies to resolve liquidity and delay issues. Uh, so that is something uh, I think in some more products have to come in place. I think in the next few years, what may happen is uh, banking system will move from collateral base to probably looking at your GST returns. A lot of data will come. And so I think that issue will start to go away. But the challenge is R is a, is a capital intensive uh, 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 business, right? So a uh, lot of innovation has to still happen in, in this segment. Then define what is the definition of indigenous, indigenous standardization process like BIS is changing, the, now LLM has come in place. So that also harms industry or sometimes helps industry as well. So customized, so, but the standards have to be customized to the solar industry. Last year, so many new standards have come in. So, I think, so now it's a time has come in, but we need to standardize and scale up on that. And the other thing is create knowledge dissemination uh, in initiative from IITs or it can be elsewhere where period of periodic updates on technology parameters and cost movements can happen. For example, uh, if you know uh, LCOE, right, w what is driving the uh, levelized cost of energy? Is it panel pricing are moving, but uh, mono, poly, newer technologies are coming in? So what can happen is if there is a centralized repository uh, of data, right, or with the central institutions, which is credit uh, credit what you, uh, from a lender's perspective. So uh, they can preview it on annual basis why the costs are moving up or down. So that becomes a one uh, go-to place for lenders and where they can seek information and we basically can say, okay, this is good technology people are working on. So that's something which has to be created and will help uh, institutions uh, to uh, lending institutions to move forward and in fact, industry as well. So uh, happy to answer any questions and uh, 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 really thank uh, the team here uh, uh, for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you, Kushagra, for, uh, for a beautiful presentation and uh, going over.